Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you the premium and economy magazines by Blurb. So I've been away for a while. Sorry I didn't publish any new videos. I was away on holiday and then I had a horrible cold which didn't want to go away for two, three weeks. And then, you know, the school year started back to teaching. So everything was a little bit hectic, but finally the books arrived and I'm going to start publishing my reviews regularly from now on. So today is going to be about Blurb again. If you follow my blog, you know that I published many articles and videos about Blurb before, but all of them were about the photo books, the lay flat standard and the various options you can choose with them. However, many of you asked me questions about the magazines, how they compare, what's the difference between the premium and the economy magazine and how they look. So I finally ordered one of each and I just wanted to test them and let you know my thoughts about them and is it worth going for the premium and what's the main difference. So Blurb is a, a huge American corporation. They have websites all around the world. So if you're in the UK, it's gonna be blurb.co.uk. If you're in the US, it's blurb.com and so on. They ship worldwide and they, they are basically a self-publishing company and you can create photo books, trade books, cookbooks, whatever you want, and obviously magazines as well. Their price range is extremely affordable, so all of their products are at a very good price and they have deals every single week or every second week. So if you go to my blog, thephotobookguru.com slash deals, you'll always find the latest blurb, uh, discount, voucher codes, and make sure to use them. So anyway, the magazines come in two versions. This one is the premium and that one is the economy. So the big question is which one to choose and is it worth um, upgrading for the premium or is the economy good enough? Now it really depends on the purpose and how particular you are about quality, but just at the first glance, I can tell you that the difference between the two books is not subtle at all. It's very obvious and the premium has a much, much better quality than the economy. That shouldn't mean that the economy is not something that you can use. It just really depends on your purpose and the contents of the, of the magazine. So I'm gonna go into my up close shots now. I'm gonna talk about the size, the cover, the paper, the binding, the printing, and the editing process of these magazines. And then I come back and tell you about the full price, the discount, the shipping, and the pros and cons, and the final verdict. So stay with me. So number one, sizes. The magazines at the moment come in only one size, which is 22 by 28 centimeters. So roughly an A4 size by a few millimeters. That's the size. It's really the most popular magazine size. If you go into the news agents, that's the most common magazine you'll find. Now, I think that a smaller size would be a really good addition to the range, like maybe an A5 size or something between an A5 and A4 because you see more and more uh, smaller magazines, they fit better into smaller bags. Even on the plane, now you, you know that we have so many restrictions regarding on what you can bring on board, how big your bag can be, so giving a smaller option for the magazines would definitely be a plus. Let's go on to the cover. So as you can see, it's a fully printed cover. You can print on the front and the back side of the cover as well. I didn't print anything on the back side, but you can choose um, a design for the inside of the cover too. The quality is not the same for the two magazines. That's the premium one. And on the website, it says that the premium is printed on 216 GSM semi-gloss white and the economy is 176 GSM semi-gloss. So slightly thinner, but the same finish. To me, the premium looks a lot glossier than the economy. The economy looks a bit more like silk and the premium is a proper glossy finish and the thickness is different as well. The economy is quite thin, but the premium is a lot thicker, so it protects the magazine for a longer time and it, you know, it's less um, vulnerable to creases and those sort of damages that happen inside your bag. So that's about the covers and let's go on to the binding. As you can see, both of these magazines are perfect bound, which means that the pages are stuck at the spines, they're glued together. Now let me give you a flip through so you can see what's actually in this magazine. I haven't done that in the intro. So I made this magazine about my all of my trips in 2019. I know it's not the end of the year yet, but um, you know, it was a nice little collection of memories. And these designs were all from the editor before you start. 
asking questions. So that's how it looks. Some double page spreads, a little description, you know, of all the uh, places I visited. It's almost like a little, um, you know, mashup of the year. Um, and this one, I think, is 24 or 26 pages, if I'm not mistaken. There we go. A few more pages. So as you can see, it doesn't stay fully flat and there is a little bit getting lost in the middle, but not too much. Um, it's your usual magazine binding and there's nothing on the spine because obviously it's uh, too thin and you wouldn't be able to put anything there. Let's go on to the paper options. Now this is where there's a big difference again between the premium and the economy. The premium has a 118 GSM matte text stock, which is ATLB in American terms and it's white paper. Now, as you can see, it's still a lot thinner than photo book papers, but it's substantially thicker than most average news agent magazines. So it's more like the high-end magazines if you think of, um, you know, home interior design or some really expensive fashion magazines. They have similar sort of uh, thickness pages. So it's going to last quite well. It doesn't crease easily and it's nice to page through. So it gives the, the magazine a more high-end look. The Economy, on the other hand, has a lot thinner paper. Actually, I found two different uh, pieces of information on the website. When you go onto the magazine sections, you see that it says 104 GSM, but when you go onto which paper to choose on the blurb help section, then it states it's 89 GSM. So. To me, it definitely feels 104 because 89 would be something that you use in your home printer, that kind of thickness, and this is definitely a bit thicker than that. So I think it's the information on the website which is the correct one, not the one in the help section. So 104 GSM, and on the website it states that this is a glossy finish. Now it's hard to see in this slide, but let me go to something more colorful. You can definitely see that it has more shine than the premium paper, which is a little bit more matte. This light is not doing too much justice to the difference between the finishes, but trust me when I say that the economy is more on the glossy side and the premium is kind of a silky finish. So it has a gloss, a subtle gloss, but it's not as shiny as this one. And now comes the biggest difference. Let's go on to the print, the print quality. So the premium magazine is printed on an indigo printer and the economy is printed on inkjet printers. Now that in itself shouldn't mean a lot, but when you see the quality, there is a big, big difference between the two uh, magazines and the way they were printed. So I'm going to just go to a page, to the same page in both magazines, and hopefully you'll be able to instantly see how much fainter this one looks. And when I go close up, again, the difference in quality should be very, very obvious. Now here's another page with a portrait picture. There we go. And again, you can see the difference in the saturation, the vividness. And when I go really up close, you can see the, the dot structure is a lot more noticeable in the inkjet because probably it was printed using a very economic setting which uses fewer ink droplets. And the indigo one is a lot more crisp and uh, it's just richer and fuller than the economy. Again, to me, the difference here speaks for itself. So if you compare these two photos, you can see the difference in the color and also the difference in the print quality. So that's all about the printing process. So once again, indigo, inkjet. I'm going to post here one more up close picture so you can see the difference magnified and hopefully that should uh, show you the difference in the finest detail. And just one final thing to mention about ICC profiles. If you don't know what they are, then it's fine. But those of you who work with them and want to know more about them, Blurb provides an ICC profile that you can download and install. Also, if you are in the Bookwrite um, editor, the downloadable one from their website, you can click on the soft proofing option in the preferences and then in the preview it's going to show you 
um, the actual look when it comes out in print as opposed to the RGB original look of your photos. But there are instructions on the website on how to do this and if colors are really important to you and you want to know how the colors switch and translate from RGB into CMYK according to Blurb's profiles, then there is possibility to work with those and check them before they go into print. Now, final thing to talk about is the editing process. How can you make a magazine? What are the tools at your disposal? These magazines were created in the Blurb Bookwrite editor, which is the, the editor that Blurb offers that you can download and install onto your computer. It's not the online editor. They have an online editor as well. And if you don't want to use any of these, then you can use pro options like uh, InDesign, Adobe products and so on. So you can download templates from the website, design it yourself, export it as a PDF and upload it to the Blurb website. Now, if you look at these templates, I try to not change them at all. So these were coming straight from the Bookwrite editor. I think the layouts are really nice. Obviously they are mostly photo based. You don't get too many elements and text boxes and things like that. And you know, like in a magazine you would get so many layers, um, opacities and lots of backgrounds for the text and you know, just graphic design, uh, little details. So you don't get those in the book write editor. The layouts are very similar to the ones you find in the photo books. But if you create a magazine like this, which is mostly um, photos and text, I think it looks really great. If your magazine is going to be very text-based and you want to create lots of um, text elements and layouts, then you might be better off working in Adobe InDesign or you know something similar and export it as a PDF because the editor doesn't really have those kind of functionalities where you can layer many, many compositions uh, like in Photoshop. So let's start with the price. Um, the full price for a 20 page premium magazine is $5.99. Uh, this excludes taxes and shipping. And the full price for the same amount of pages in the economy is $3.99. So the difference is very small. Obviously, if you order a huge uh, run, like hundreds of copies, then it's going to make a big difference in the price. But if you only need a few copies, then you know, the price difference is not huge because both are really affordable. Delivery. Uh, obviously, Blurb delivers worldwide, so wherever you are in the world, you can get these magazines. The price of shipping is going to depend on which service you choose. They've got four services, Economy, Standard, Express, and Priority in the United States, and around the world, it's going to be slightly different if it's international. The cheapest one, which is Economy, is $3.99, and the most expensive priority is $23.99. Now, obviously, if you order a single magazine, you're not going to go for priority because it's 10 times the price of the actual magazine unless you're in a hurry and you really need it, but that's the price for shipping. And they all come in these uh, cardboard sleeves, which actually doesn't open. So the, the magazine slips out from here and it keeps it nice and flat. It doesn't bend. So when you take your magazine out, it's going to be uh, in perfect condition without any uh, crinkles or, you know, uh, rips around. Discounts. Uh, as I said, Blurb has regular discounts on their website. If you go to my blog, thephotobookguru.com slash deals, you can always find the latest uh, voucher codes for Blurb. Now, uh, some of the codes only work for photo books. When you order these um, magazines, there's always a 15% voucher code, um, little leaf flat in the box. So you can use that for your next purchase, which means that you're always going to get 15% off. But if you're lucky, you can get 20 or 30% off as well. And now here is the final verdict. What are the good and bad things and which one to choose and why? As I said, the difference is really, really obvious between the two books. As you can see it in my up close shots, the quality is way much better in the premium. If quality is of any importance to you, you will always go for the premium one. If your magazine is in this kind of style where you have um, loads of photos and it's almost like a, a photo book, then you're going to go for the premium because the photos didn't come out really well in the economy. But if you're magazine is all about text, but you need to have some graphs and a few pictures here and there, but it's, it's, it's basically for the purpose of reading, then the economy is going to be really good for that. As I said, the price difference is not really big when you 
order a single magazine. So the $2 upgrade for this book to me is nothing because the difference in quality is way bigger than $2. But obviously if you order 1000 magazines, then the, the difference is going to be almost 40%. So you really have to think about what is going to be the, the purpose of these magazines and is it worth really going for that? Do you have enough photos? Do you have enough good quality photos? And is the magazine going to be uh, you know, used for a long time? Is it going on the shelves or is it just being read once and then go straight to the bin or recycling? So these are my final thoughts about the magazines. I hope it's um, a little bit clearer now what's the difference between the economy and the premium. Again, if you ask me, I would always go for the premium because I'm a quality and pictures person. But if you're all about the text and a few little photos here and there, then go for the economy. If you have any more questions about these magazines, leave them in the comments box. If you want to see more up-close pictures, go onto my blog where there's a written article of the Blurb magazines. Thank you very much for watching and as always, subscribe for more.